All right, so these are more examples of chain. We're going to cover what do you use with radicals, rationals, trig, and then multiple chains. We already did one with a binomial expansion, a polynomial. So let's try it with just plain old radicals. So with a radical, the inside of our radical is what we want to use. Remember, these are symbols of grouping. So the radical is a symbol of grouping. And so our inside would be 2x plus 4. And so I always like to rewrite the inside off the side so I know what my derivative is. And we do need to rewrite these just like we've done before with a general power. Everything needs to look like a general power. So now our f prime of x would equal 1 half 2x plus 4, and then we subtract 1, so negative 1 half. And then we need to make multiply by the derivative. So the derivative of 2x plus 4 is 2. And there we have it. So we've used chain. So my inside is 2x plus 4. So I took the derivative, multiplied it by 2, and that is my full derivative. And you can see that the half of 2 would cancel, leaving us with 1. So we end up with f prime of x equals 2x plus 4 to the negative 1 half. But we have to make sure we write it back in its original form with no negative exponents. So this would be 1 over 2x plus 4 to the half. So our final f prime of x would equal 1 over the square root of 2x plus 4. And there's how you deal with radicals in chain rule. All right, next one is rationals. So my grouping here is down here. That is my extra function. So I'm going to write that over here. 2x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 61x plus 5. And then we rewrite it with a negative exponent. Now you could use product rule with the, or quotient rule with this, but we're showing you how to do it with chain. So I put the negative one up there. So my derivative would be negative one parenthesis, 2x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 61x to the fifth. Remember we're treating that as our function g right here, so it doesn't change. That is g, g is g. And then we subtract one, negative two, times, now we gotta go over and find the derivative of our inside. So that would be ax cubed plus 6x minus 61. So we have to put parentheses on this one because otherwise we'd only be multiplying it to the first term. So we have to make sure that we multiply it to the entire derivative of the inside. All right, so now here's what happens with the rationals. This part that you multiplied, that is our new numerator. That's where it's going to go. And it's going to get a negative. So what I like to do is distribute that negative to all of these and put them on top. So that would be negative 8 x cubed minus 6x plus 61. Draw the line. And then this one is going on the bottom with a square because it has a negative exponent. So it's just a little bit of rewrite. So this is how you deal with rationals and chain rule. Now this is just a rational with one term on the bottom, with a, a polynomial on the bottom. There's nothing on top. If there was a two up there, that's fine, a three. If we put an x up there, so if there was this, then we would have to use product rule or quotient rule. Your choice using chain now. There you have it. All right, with trigs, uh, functions, you do need to rewrite them. This is when they have an exponent. So I always say rewrite it, and then that gives you what the inside is. It puts a parenthesis on it. So if you've noticed, each time we've rewritten it, it puts a parenthesis, letting you know what the inside is. And so by rewriting this, we can see that the inside is sine x. So we write sine x here. So now our derivative of f prime, so f prime of x would be 7 sine x to the power of 6 and then we multiply the inside. So derivative of sine is cosine x, and there you have it, see, nice and quick. So we always like to put that sine x to the 6 to the n, so f prime of x equals 7 cosine of x, and I don't know why, it's just something that I'm just used to from all the years, is that's the way it's going to be written. It doesn't matter, no, you could just have stopped here, but you really do want to put that 6 back on the sign just to get the correct form. All right, this last one is multiple chains, and sometimes you don't see it, but again, you want to rewrite it. So when you have cosine, there's really a parenthesis here, 
and we're going to put a 1 plus x squared in there to the half. So with cosine, we're really going to have another parenthesis because that entire thing is inside of the cosine. So all of that belongs to cosine, so you need to put little parentheses around it like it's hugging it, saying, this is mine. So if you see a trig function with stuff inside, parenthesis. You see a radical, parenthesis. And the reason you're writing parentheses is to show you that you have insides. So our first inside is this. So we would get 1 plus x squared to the half. And now you can see there's still a parenthesis there. So we know we have another inside. Every single time you see a parenthesis, a set of parentheses, there's something inside of it. And so we would write that over here. And you notice there's no more parentheses here. That's it. So we have parentheses one for the cosine, because that is a symbol of grouping. We have one for the radical, because that is a symbol of grouping. And we just work our way out. This is where a chain rule comes in. We're, we're making chains with parentheses, and we're doing one every single time. So the first is cosine, and everything inside is our first inside. And then everything inside that one is our second inside. And there are no more parentheses, so we know we're done. And then now it's just take the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to derivative cosine is negative sine. And you remember, the inside is our g function, so it does not change. And so we put that one back, 1 plus x squared to the half. And then now we multiply it by the derivative of the inside. So derivative of the inside would be 1 half. 1 plus x squared minus 1 half. And then, like I said, you would just continue on. So what's the inside of that one? Well, it's 1 plus x squared, but we already wrote it over here. So that's 2x. And so now you just tack those on. So 1 half, 1 plus x squared to the negative 1 half, and then times 2x. So you can see that was our first inside. That was our second inside, and it's just the derivative as we move. So the derivative of the inside would just be another chain rule as we go across. So if you take each parenthesis and rewrite them off to the side, you just take the derivative of each, throw them all together, and this is our final derivative that we just have to simplify. Now, yeah, these aren't fun. The more you do them, the better you get at them. So they do take practice. But we end up with a negative. Half of 2 would be 1, so we know that's going to cancel. And so we end up with negative x sine, and I'm going to rewrite it back as the square root of 1 plus x squared. And then this one has a negative exponent, so it goes to the bottom, and it's a square root of 1 plus x squared. And there you have it, the most complicated way you could get here, trig functions with other algebraic expressions inside of them. So you're going to have to do chain rule twice. All right, thank you.